Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 15th of January. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First we are going to start with the kupinsk Liman front line from this area. As you can see there are very heavy clashes all over the front line. The main clashes are in on the Liman front line, but when talking about Kupin's front line, the Russians tries to attack the Ukraine. Of accumulation of their forces they were attacking the 14th mechanized brigade russians were attacking 92nd mechanized brigade in the towns like vrechna and the towns like stelimachovka that located in this area area and novoselkova these towns this novoselkova this stelimachovka and this vrechna and as a result of those attacks, the Ukrainian lost around 50 soldiers and something around three armored vehicles the russians are saying that the ukrainians still uh, make some uh, attempts to take control over Novoselkovska, they're sending like the, the small groups uh, of uh, 20, 50, 20 soldiers in this town trying to get control over some outskirts of this town, but then the Russians attack with flamethrower systems and the Ukrainians or destroyed or were forced, are forced to step back. So no, no changes in this area and I believe that the Ukrainians decided to freeze this front line for a while at least until they uh, take a decision or have a solution what to do with the Solidar or with Liman frontline. When talking about Liman frontline we have a lot of very interesting updates from this area. The Russians are saying that they were attacking the 66 mechanized brigade in the town by the name of Makievka, also in the town like Stelmachovka. Also the Russians attacking the Ukrainians in the, in the town by the name of Kuzminka. Uh, Kuzumovka, Kuzmina, sorry, in this area. And they were attacking 966 mechanized brigade, 92nd mechanized brigade, 95th uh, assault brigade. The Russians were attacking the 71st Jaeger brigade in the area of Dibrova in this forest uh, in the south of this Dibrova. Furthermore, as a result of effective artillery duels, the Ukrainians lost at least one Hovitzer D20 and some one Hovitzer or D30 in this area. Uh, as you can see, uh, and um, furthermore, the Ukrainians lost around 115 soldiers and something around 6 armored vehicles. So as you can see, uh, when talking about, let's say, Solidar, Bakhmut area, and when we compare the data from the mini report of Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation, I believe that the losses on Liman frontline are higher than the losses of the Ukrainians on Bakhmut um, Solidar frontline. And this is very important because as you um, might see from the Western sources map and from the Russian source map, the Ukrainians got as close as possible to Kriminaya. Dibrov is under Russian control. The Ukrainians attacked this area from the south through the forest and they uh, reached the outskirts of this town. So the Ukrainians were ready. It was some kind of, I don't know, a game between the Russians and the Ukrainians. And the main uh, thing was, the main uh, goal of that game was who reached the target faster. And the Russians were faster. They fast... Uh, I'm talking about the reaching the outskirts of this or that town. The Russians were fast in getting Solidar and uh, the Ukrainians were slower in this game. And that's why now the Ukrainians completely freezed on the front line. They can't start anything because according to the Western source and the Russian source, a lot of forces from Liman were redeployed back to Siribrianko front line, back to Solidar to stabilize the front line. And meanwhile, a lot of forces are freezed and stuck in this area right in front of the door, uh, Kriminal door to start offensive operation. And meanwhile, the Russians um, and of course the Ukrainians in Kriminal front line has less, um, not very good positions. And the, the Russians using this situation, uh, these small operational posts in Kriminal front line try to reduce the Ukrainians as much as possible using artillery, using effective artillery duels and so on. So if nothing changes in the next few weeks, the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from Kriminal front line. Uh, also, don't forget that uh, w when talking about these days, there is a small window, uh, something around 10 days, maybe less, 7 days a week of uh, a small window of the temperature that is higher than zero uh, by celsius so that means that nobody are able to use the fields and the tactic of broad frontline attack because uh, the equipment will stuck in the on the ground so that's why um, the, during this week the only possible attacks is uh, the only possible let's say battles and clashes we can find um, near towns, in forests, uh, so it, like positions like Solidar. But when talking about, let's say, 
these fields that located on the west from Krimenaya and Svatova, I don't believe that Ukrainians these days are able to use these fields to attack using the broad front line attack because they were stuck in this area. When talking about uh, Solidar front lines, you can see there are a lot of updates in this area, there are a lot of updates and the most important one, not the most important, one of the most interesting is near Biristova. As you can see, when talking about the Western sources map, uh, according to the Russian sources, According to the Russian sources, the Russians and managed to take control over the checkpoints that located along the railroad station. So uh, according to information we have, the Russians got as close as possible to uh, the railroad station and as close as possible to Visola. So this is the area, according to the last update we have, according to the Russian source map, that the Russians managed to achieve. Uh, furthermore, when talking about um, Solidar, uh, when talking about this railway station soil, about this area today, we got the final confirmation, not even from the Russian sources, from the Ukrainian sources. There is a soldier, uh, like maybe some kind of blogger, I don't know, but he uh, make a lot of video in Solidar from Ukrainian side. His name is Madiar, and um, he published the video of the Ukrainian flag over the uh, over the salt mine number seven. And today, somewhere in the evening of the local time, he reported that the Ukrainians lost control over the western outskirts of Solidar, and that this mine is already uh, um, salt mine number seven is under the Russian control. When talking about it, was like the Ukrainian confirmation, not even the Russian. So I believe that it. It's true. When talking about uh, railroad station soil, as you can see, the Russians tried to develop their bridgehead around the railroad station, and the Russians tried to develop their bridgehead on the north northeast part of this town. So we can say we can say that by this evening, the Russians established control over the uh, eastern part uh, of this area. I'm talking uh, uh, according to the railroad. The railroad. So, as you can see, now this territory is under Russian control. So, they reached the railroad uh, and uh, furthermore, the Russians made few attempts of offensive operation in the direction of Razdolovka without success, in the direction of Visola without success, and in the direction of Krasnopolovka also without success. As you can see, uh, this is a very important, big progress, we might say, but the most important thing that the Russians still haven't managed to cross the railroad. They have their position on, let's say, the Russian side of this railroad. No progress on the Ukrainian side. Um, and the question is whether the Russians are planning to cross the railroad in this winter campaign. Maybe they're not planning because they understand the difficulties of holding such a bridge hat on the Ukrainian side. Or maybe they want to do this, but they still haven't found a place to do this. We'll see, anyway, we'll see. But I believe that even before crossing the railroad somewhere near Bakhmut, first the Russians will try to take control or to fix their issues, all their issues with Visola and Razdolov with these two towns and maybe they don't need even to cross the railroad in this area because if the Russians are able to establish control over Razdolov and Visola, I believe that the entire front line in this area will be collapsed automatically in the Ukrainians. I don't know what they're going to do in this case because Sever's group, uh, will. Uh, there is just one road left for Sever's for evacuation, this one. And as you can see from Razdolovka, this area is already under fire control. And of course, the Russians will try to develop their bridgehead in Ivana Darivka, in Sporna, Vyimka, Verkhnikamenska. And for a very short period of time, the Russians are able to establish or return control and to get back these territories that are located on the right side of this arrow. And furthermore, they will try to develop their bridgehead in direction of Pirizny, Fyodorovka, Saka, Ivan City. So to try to establish to this bridge hat and this is going to be a critical situation for the ukrainians in savers bridge hat and we might see collapse of savers bridge hat even much faster than the collapse of uh, bakhmut front line uh, because Bakhmut, there are still a lot of things to do. When talking about Krasnogora, the Russians, uh, the Wagners, managed to enter the outskirts and the northeast part of Krasnogora. So for now, the situation in this town is something like this. But Garodna was taken by the Russians a very long time ago. So this situation in the Krasnogora and Podgorodnia area. When talking about uh, the 
let's say the north or let's say the central east part of Bakhmut the Russians uh, have control over these streets and they continue developing their bridgehead so as you can see I believe that uh, during the winter company uh, during, during winter um, the Russians will be able to establish control over Krasnogora this town is located let's say on the Russian side I believe that they will be able to cross this small river Bakhmut kind to get these uh, and to take control and establish real control over this uh, period of territory furthermore some Russian sources are saying that these territories are already under Russian control and they're doing some kind of clearing operation or at least this town these uh, two parts in this, are in the green zone and the Russians continue clearing operation the Ukrainians send reinforcement so there is like 60 to 40 uh, like uh, about the control of this territory so this area will be taken by the Russians and this is uh, when talking about Seversk and Leman, this is the reason why the Ukrainians stopped any movements in Crimea. Crimea played its game, played its role. Uh, it, uh, the Russians managed to froze a lot of forces in this bridgehead. A lot of Ukrainian forces, resources, and now we see, and at least when talking about this configuration of the front line, we see that all the Ukrainians' attempts on the Liman front line were useless. Uh, they spent a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of manpower to develop, achieve the success, and now I believe that they are forced to step back. And to tell the truth, um, it's the Ukrainians, when talking about retreating and stepping back, uh, it is very painful for them to make such a decision because when we're talking about the russians they uh, left uh, i believe that they have already left the territories on ukraine even more than they uh, controls right now so they left the north they love kharkiv they left Kherson, and everything every single time the russians uh, retreated of course at the beginning it was very difficult for the russians to understand the situation it was very painful but now when we understand if the Russians take a decision to step back and if the Russians, let's say, take a decision to step back from Svatova Starobilsk, this situation, the Russian soldiers and the Russian uh, population, civilians, will, uh, will, will take it. It's no problem with this because they understand that it is necessary. The Russians have already passed three such a big retreat regrouping in the territory of Ukraine. But when talking about Ukrainian, just a single town like Solidar, and they, uh, we see that it's very difficult. They can't accept the situation. It's very difficult for them. And I can't even imagine what is going to be when the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from Seversk when the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from Liman one more time, I believe this might become a real catastrophe for the Ukrainians. If they are not ready. They haven't done anything to be ready for such things. They need to be ready to step back. It's a war. You can't always win. Sometimes you win, sometimes you are forced to step back. But if you uh, expect from your army just that you're going to win, uh, if it, it won't bring you success anyway. Okay, now let's talk about Bakhmut, and from Bakhmut comes a lot of very interesting uh, updates. And first of all, let's take a look at the south part of Bakhmut, and as you can see, there are very heavy clashes in Klishevka. And as we discussed yesterday, if you remember, we discussed these trenches, this fortification, and today the Russians reported that they managed to establish control over this fortification. Furthermore, some Russian sources confirms at least uh, there is a uh, there is a Wagner's um, like uh, maps their own thing that they're published and they confirms as well Wagner's that they established control over this fortification as well so the situation in Bakhmut with this uh, back is true it's not some kind of speculation or uh, I don't know fake update or something like this now at least for today the Russians have control over this part of um, Klishevka as well and they, now this is a very powerful bridgehead because now the Russians have at least uh, visible that we can see two fortifications on one of the uh, let's say uh, left side of this cannon another one on the right side and this is a very powerful bridgehead the Russians have positions to hide there is trenches there is another one now positions to hide to survive during the artillery strike they have a trenches in this forest and now from this bridgehead the russians are planning to develop their offensive operation in direction of the towns that located in the south from this one like the leave kabila gora and from this bridgehead that russians wants to establish fire control over the road now uh, over let's say these roads and to uh from this bridgehead over these roads and the Russians wants to cut the supply and support of the Klishevka and the trenches here. So 
the Russians got as close as possible to establish 100% control over Klishevka and the trenches that located on the north of Klishevka. And this is going to be another tactical victory for the Russians before the spring campaign. Uh, after 10 days, uh, there's going to be another window of uh, uh, low temperature, below zero. Maybe the Russians will try to develop. Uh, I believe that if it's below zero, uh, the Russians needed to need to use some broad front line attack using fields. And maybe in 10 days, the Russians will uh, finally f solve the problems with Razdolovka, Vesele, Sporne, Ivana, Darev. So the towns that might be taken by using the broad front line attacks, maybe the Russians will try to do something in Liman area. And, uh, and that's it. Then there's going to be February. I'm, don't, I'm not sure about the weather in February, but if you remember in the 20. On the 20th of February of the last year, there was a very bad weather. The, we the temperature was more than zero. So that's why it was very difficult to use fields to attack the Russian stuck on the road with because of big convoys of uh, armored vehicles and tanks. So anyway, the Russians will take Lishevka before the spring campaign. Uh, I'm not sure about Bakhmut, but today there was at least a few, public uh, few um, maybe some a lot of, not even a lot, maybe few military experts from the Ukrainian side and from the Western countries were saying that uh, now the Ukrainians discuss uh, the possibility to leave Bakhmut to the Russians. I'm not saying that they're going to leave Bakhmut, but uh, some, uh, when talking about some sources, they're saying that Zaluzhny uh, suggested this option to Zelensky to, to step back from Bakhmut because of uh, heavy losses and to move on the line of Konstantinovka, Druzhovka, Kramatorsk, Lyonsk. There are still a lot of towns. There is a very big back of these small villages and all these villages the Russians will be forced to take. And of course, it is going to be very heavy clashes and the Russians might spend up to a year to, to, to reach the outskirts of Slavinsk and Kramatorsk by taking all these towns. It can take a lot of time for the Russians. During the next 2023 year campaign or something like this, uh, f when talking about uh, uh, the Solidar Bakhmut area, the Russians destroyed the uh, radar in Konstantinovka. Uh, the Ukrainians are sending reinforcements. They are sending reinforcements to the Tarets conglomeration, and the Ukrainians still try to hold Klishevka because if Klishevka falls one more time, one more thing about Klishevka, if Klishevka falls, the Russians will receive the window or door to start offensive operation. Uh, in direction of a uh, southwest part of Bakhmut, and this is going to be a real cauldron. So anyway, until Klishevka stays, there is no, there is nothing to worry about. But as soon as Klishevka falls, I believe we start counting days or weeks before entire Bakhmut is going to be taken in a cauldron, or the Ukrainians will make a decision to fall back from this town. Anyway, anyway, when talking about Donetsk, the Russians reported that the losses of Ukrainians in this town during the previous 24 hours were around 80 soldiers and something around 8 armored vehicles. And now we are moving to Donetsk. Uh, by the way, as you can see, there is just a report. I received an icon saying that soil is under Russian control. Just, but just the part that located on the... Uh, on the west, on the east from the railroad, the uh, west part of soil, the west part of soil is still under Ukrainian control, and I'm not sure if the Russians are able to cross the railroad. It is very difficult job, but I believe that maybe they will do this. When talking about South Donetsk, the Russians continue effective uh, counter um, artillery duels. They destroyed uh, a number of some number of Akatsi artillery system, another uh, Hovetzem Stab B, another Hovetzem Stab B in the uh, South Donetsk area. Uh, furthermore, the Russians, when talking about uh, the uh, Zaporozhye front line, and, and uh, the Russians destroyed uh, at least two, one Gvazdika in Gulai Polya, it's a howitzer, uh, and uh, another uh, Gvazdika in Shevchenkova, near in the outskirts of Shevchenko, this one. So, as you can see, there are no changes in this area. On the ground, the Russians lost just, or the Ukrainians lost just 50 soldiers and something around four armored vehicles there and one commandos in this area as well. So the front line are stabilized here. And the Russians, I believe uh, now they're completely concentrated on Bakhmut. They con concentrated a lot of forces because everything might be changed in a day, in a second, and everybody need to be, need to be prepared. Because if the front line collapses, the Russians need to be ready to push and to return as much as possible. 
And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel is reminded to condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. Have a good day. Bye bye.